Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Welcome to a toast to the men with your guy SD Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Before we get started, you know the routine. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Let's go. Development versus winning. Development versus winning. You know, I came across this this topic, uh, where this topic entered my mind when I was listening to the Kwame Brown video, one of many videos he, he's made. And I support that brother. I'm a fan of no man, but I, I do support certain brothers. I support that brother. And one thing he said that uh, sparked something in my mind, some thought. And some reflection in my mind was when he stated when he was drafted by the uh, Washington Wizards by Michael Jordan. When Michael Jordan was the, I believe, the GM at the time. He was also a player. They took Kwame Brown as the overall number one pick straight out of high school. And one thing Kwame said was, that no one knew is that Jordan planned on trading him for Elton Brand. Now, just like Kwame, I agree that would have been a, a great trade. Uh, Elton Brand at the time was doing his thing, man. Uh, was a veteran guy, putting up huge numbers. Uh, I remember Elton Brand went to uh, Duke, and uh, he was he was a good player at Duke, but I didn't see I didn't see that coming. Uh, what I saw in the NBA, and that shocked me. But he was putting up some monster numbers, man, some uh, some double-doubles, like 20-plus points, 10-plus rebounds. I think he did that for a few years. So that would have been a great trade. Uh, made sense, and, and Kwame agrees with that. That's, that lets me know that the guy is very logical and very objective, right? A sober mind. But something else he said was, you know, Jordan was never all in on him. And if you know Jordan, like many of us do, very competitive, super competitive. His whole thing is winning. Win, win, win at any cost. And that's cool. I'm a guy, I'm a competitive guy. I love winning. Uh, I play to win. But. When does development come into play? And Kwame said he never got the development he needed. You know, he was never developed properly. Straight out of high school, uh, didn't experience a college run offense. You know, defense is pretty simple, uh, but offense can be complicated. So he's coming from a high school offense straight to a professional offense, playing against professional men, grown men at 18 years old, uh, the physical will come naturally. You know, big kid, 6'11", over 250, that's going to come. His man strength is going to come. He might have been in his man body, I don't know. But mentally, mentally, he said he wasn't developed properly. You know, you got a guy, like I said, man, working with grown men now. And millions of dollars. And uh, it wasn't developed properly. Properly, Jordan was concerned more about winning, immediate winning, opposed to developing this young man. Now, this is not to uh, throw shots at Jordan. I'm a supporter of Jordan, um, but you know he, he wasn't one of my favorite players. He is the greatest. Don't get me wrong, but I just like certain kind of guys, man. But uh, that's neither here or there. But if you look at Jordan's history, he's never been good at developing players. He's never been good at developing teammates. He doesn't uh, know how to draft well. That's obvious. He doesn't know how to develop players from rookies into seasoned vets. That's obvious. He doesn't know how to develop a winning atmosphere. 
And this is why I think you have to give uh, Phil Jackson, the fame, Phil Jackson, Coach Phil Jackson, a lot of credit for Jordan's success. Now, Phil, a winner. Hey, man, Phil was one of the greatest coaches ever, ever in any sport. One of the greatest minds. But the thing with Phil is he's great at developing. Yeah, you need to need to read Phil's books and and uh, listen to some interviews on Phil Jackson. But uh, he's great at developing players from a skill set uh, perspective, and he's also great at developing the minds of players. You know, so uh, he he believes in developing the mind to be just as strong as the body and as your skill set. And so Phil has different practices he puts in place during practice, during practice uh, that every player must do. He gives every player on the team a book, a book according to their personality that will match up and speak to their personality. Right. So he's very good at that. You know, people might call Phil quirky, whatever, but he masters developing the minds of players. Uh, every player that's played under him will tell you that, will attest to that. Jordan, not so. And so uh, that's why you got to give a lot of that, that credit to Phil. Now, just the same with Kobe Bryant. He's Jordan 2.0, right? Uh, just as competitive, uh, just as focused on winning at all costs. But he also only won championships under Phil Jackson, the guru, the guy who focuses on developing the mind. These two guys did not win without Phil. But Phil won without them, with both of them, but, you know, he, he's won. He, he won without Jordan. He won without Kobe, right? So I think you got to give most of that, that, that uh, the credit to, to Phil. He's the glue to it all. The high development of the mind is very important in life, not only sports, but life. And, you know, it's a shame that Kwame went through that but hey, he survived it, a lesson learned, and he's here to tell the story and help others. So you look at a player like LeBron. LeBron gets a lot of flack about uh, perceived as to not being as competitive or having that, that, uh, that dog or that winning at all costs component as Kobe and Jordan. You know, that that's that's subjective. Who knows, right? But what LeBron is good at is developing players. Even as a player himself, he's good at develop developing players, developing their minds, making them believe in themselves, not beating them down, and building them up. LeBron coaches you up. He makes you play at a higher level than you believe you can actually play at, or maybe then you have the ability naturally to play at. He makes you play higher, he coaches you up. He's he's good at that. Not so much, not at all, really, with Kobe and Jordan. Two totally, you know, different types of personalities. But I think both is needed. Now, without a developed mind. Can you win in life? A highly developed mind, can you win? Uh, I guess if talent outweighs, if you're that talented, I guess you can win. But you're going to lose so much in something else. So, winning versus development. And so I thought about, man, how does that relate to life? And parenting and um, 
teaching, the schools. And I'm like, you know, I just don't think the majority of us consciously say to ourselves, how can I, what's the best practice to develop this baby, this child, into the best person they can be for society? I don't think most people think like that. I don't think most people consciously think about developing a child's mind to be the best they can possibly be. Um, I think most people have kids for selfish reasons, for reasons that makes them feel like they're winning, right? Um, yeah, just their own their own reasons, their own objectives. But it's definitely not to uh, develop something that they can give back to society and, uh, and be a blessing and a gift to society. I don't think most people uh, think like that. And I think we suffer from that because uh, in general, I think we're selfish people. It's me, 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 and what I want. And it's not about the development of a human being. Um, that's why, you know, uh, childbirth out of wedlock is so high. That's why the divorce rate is so high. That's why the family court is packed. That's why father alienation is so prevalent because people are selfish and they're not thinking about, man, how is this affecting this child? What, what, what role is this playing in the development of this child? How will this impact this child and in turn impact society? Because eventually you have to give this person, this child back to society. And that child, that person, is going to give everything that was instilled in them, everything they took in, they're going to put it back on society. I don't even think people consciously think about that. So, yeah, that was just something on my mind. You know, when Kwame Brown said he wasn't developed properly, uh, they had their own agenda. Jordan had his agenda. The owner of the Wizards at his time, he was all in on Kwame Brown. He didn't like how Jordan was talking to him. He didn't like how Jordan was talking to the other players. That's where the clash happened. He fired Jordan. So the owner was more concerned about the development. Jordan was more concerned about winning right now. I think he only had like, he was like 39, I believe, at the time. He knew he only had like two years left. He didn't want a rookie. He wanted to trade him for a veteran he could win with. And, uh. You know, he, he didn't care. He didn't care. Not only that, man, uh, he put out a narrative around that young man at the time that he had small hands. You know, uh, yeah, dirtied up his name, dirtied up his image, his profile. And Kwame brought up a good, good, good question. He's like, what, what company would draft a player First round, uh, first pick overall, and then talk negatively about them. Yeah. So that lets you know, man, Jordan did not want him. And when he didn't get his way in trading him for Elton Brand, he did the petty thing. He did the uh, dishonorable thing and dirtying up that young man's name. And the man, the young man was 18. Think about that, Jordan was 39 or 38 at the time, the young man was 18. And you know, some people just don't have it in them to develop children, develop men, develop people. They just don't have it in them. Uh, and that's not judging, everybody's here for a reason, you know, but everybody shouldn't be coaching. Everybody shouldn't be a manager. Everybody shouldn't be a parent because their focus is not on developing a mind. And when you strip everything, 
when you strip everything, titles, basketball, clothes, cars, houses, whatever, ego, when you strip it all, we're just mindsets. We're minds roaming. And so you got a question like, who am I when you strip all this stuff away? Your good looks, your big booty, your broad chest, what, what, whatever, your height, whatever. When you strip everything away, what is your mind? How is your mind developed? What are your thoughts? What is your consciousness? What level is it on? And so I think that's what we got to get back to. And that's a long way to get back to because I don't think we've been there for uh, quite some time. But we were focused on developing the mind and making sure we're, uh, you know, creating and, and, and molding young, young uh, people into young teenagers, into young adults that are going to be uh, influential. Or, or positive or impactful in a positive way to society. I just don't think we, we're there, but we got to get there. And uh, I, I think we can. It's going to take some work, but I think we can. But yeah, that's just something that crossed my mind when I was listening to Kwame. And I was like, yeah, man, like, uh, that's not even the focus, man. You know, even when I coach, you know, I, I've been coaching since I was 16. I've never cursed out a player. I've never yelled at a player. Um, I didn't like coaches that yelled at other players or yelled at me. You know, I, I didn't need that. I always took to the coaches that really explained and made me think and made me understand why we do a certain thing, why the pick must come this way. Why did he end up open? Why was that a defensive failure? Like the why. That's where the truth comes out, the why. But a lot of coaches are yellers, but they can't teach. They can't develop. And, uh, and it, it comes to light when a coach doesn't have top talent. How does his team do? When he doesn't have the best talent, how does his team perform? Can he coach them up? Right? Uh, that's the telltale sign. So that's the telltale sign of a parent, right? Can you coach your kid up in life? Can you develop the mind? Can you inspire your kid? That's what I'm saying, man. Think about that. Like, most people should not be parents, man. Like, truly. We got a lot of people out here that have kids that should not be parents, because they're not focused on developing a person, all right, in a positive way. But yeah, man, think on that. Let me know what you think. Comment. There's something that crossed my mind and I, I wanted to speak on, all right? As always, from me to you, love, peace.